By some estimates, Vladimir Putin is worth more than $200 billion. Seth Doan speaks with a businessman who's made it his life's work to expose the web of corruption behind Putin's immense wealth. All of a sudden, the world cares about Vladimir Putin's evil. And Bill Browder, a Putin target himself, says the war in Ukraine is sharpening the world's focus on the Russian president's, quote, evil. But that's long been clear to the UK-based American-born businessman. It was in this London park that Browder says he received an alarming phone call. U.S. intelligence had learned he might be kidnapped and taken to Russia. My safe world in London completely evaporated. Browder's decades-long odyssey with the top levels of Russian power started after he moved to Russia in the 1990s to profit from its privatization following the fall of the Soviet Union. Browder's Hermitage Fund soon became the largest foreign investment fund in the country. They researched Russian companies initially to invest. What we discovered was that the oligarchs and corrupt officials who controlled these companies were stealing all the, all the profits, all the assets out of the companies. And so the only way that, that I felt like I could responsibly invest is if I could figure out how they were doing the stealing and then try to stop them. Not a way to make yourself very welcome in Russia. Well, it was, it was interesting because at the beginning of this moment, Vladimir Putin was fighting with the same guys that I was fighting with. But it turned out that he wasn't trying to end the oligarch era. He just wanted to become the biggest oligarch himself. This is quite a web. Well, this gives you some sense. The money flowed from the Russian treasury. Browder showed us some of the elaborate money laundering operations they helped to uncover. From Moldova, through Latvia, then to Switzerland. The whole idea of money laundering is to make it so complicated that effectively nobody could put together a chart like this. It takes a, an investment guy who's moved to Russia to do this? It takes an investment guy whose lawyer and friend was brutally murdered and has made it his mission for the rest of his life to go after the murderers to do this. That lawyer and friend was Sergei Magnitsky, who'd been investigating a tax fraud scheme on Browder's behalf. My company paid taxes to the Russian government. A bunch of Russian officials seized my documents and then organized an identity theft of my companies and then organized for a $230 million tax refund of taxes that we paid back to those stolen companies so they could enjoy the money. Sergei was the person who figured out the whole $230 million tax rebate fraud. Magnitsky then provided testimony to the Russian State Investigative Committee. But five weeks after Sergei testified, the same officials who he testified against arrested him, put him in pretrial detention in Russia, where he was then tortured to get him to withdraw his testimony. Sergei Magnitsky died in a Russian jail in 2009. He was 37 years old. Do you feel responsible for his death? I do. How do you deal with that? I made a vow to his, his memory to his family, to myself, that I was going to devote all of my time, all of my energy, and all of my resources to go after the people who killed him and make sure they face justice. And it's wonderful to see you. He lobbied for a landmark piece of legislation called the Magnitsky Act. It originally sanctioned people linked to that tax fraud and Sergei Magnitsky's death. Signed into law in 2012, it focused attention on the sort of corruption they'd uncovered. Part of the money from the scam went to purchase a whole bunch of properties. At Some of that money from the tax scheme wound up in London, New York, and Dubai. So you have people in the tax office with neighboring villas. Correct. His search for justice was the basis for a best-selling book. Now out this week is his latest, Freezing Order, published by Simon & Schuster, a division of Paramount Global, which owns CBS. It's the tale of what happened next, a true story of money laundering, murder, and surviving Vladimir Putin's wrath. Some of this sounds like something out of a mob, mafia movie. Vladimir Putin is the mafia boss. All of his ministers are like the, if you look at The Sopranos, like the New Jersey mafia and the Brooklyn mafia and the Philadelphia mafia. They, all, they can all take as much money as they can steal, and then they've got to pay a tribute up to the mafia boss, which is Vladimir Putin. Browder alleges that some of that stolen $230 million ended up in Vladimir Putin's hands, a leader infamous for his shadowy wealth. 
The Russian president's official salary is about $140,000 annually, which raises some obvious questions. Inside Putin's $1.4 billion residence. And a $700 million yacht. With a million-dollar watch collection. Putin has long maintained Sergei Magnitsky died of a heart attack, and his animus towards Browder was clear in this 2018 presidential press conference. For instance, we can bring up uh, the Mr. Mr. Browder. When he suggested to Donald Trump that Russia might be willing to swap 12 indicted Russian military intelligence officers if the U.S. would turn over Bill Browder. I was in shock. He has successfully campaigned for other countries to adopt the Magnitsky Act to target corrupt officials and human rights abusers. And Browder is proud that it's now among the sanctions being used to punish Russia since its invasion of Ukraine. The story of Sergei Magnitsky was a tiny microcosm of what's now been multiplied by a million times. The people of Ukraine are bearing the criminal brunt of Vladimir Putin in the same way as we did in a very small way. And I feel heartbroken because if people had listened more to what I was saying over the last 10 years, perhaps we wouldn't be in this situation.